Hello everybody, hope you all have been just having a grand old time playing around with Entity 0.50. If not, well, hopefully today's video will inspire you to jump into Entity 0.50, show you kind of some of the features that you may be missing out on. So anyways, in today's video, we're going to be discussing some of the new editor windows and inspectors. Now, all these editor windows and inspectors are built into Unity ECS by default. So if you're following along this video and you're not quite seeing some of the things that I'm seeing, then it is probably because you do need to set your project up for Unity ECS. Luckily, I do have a video on this channel that shows you the new process of how to do that with the new Entities 0.50 version. So I will leave a link up in the card as well as in the description below. And so you can check that out and get your project all set up and then come back to this video where I can show you some of the cool editor windows. Now, I just wanna start off by saying that a lot of these editor windows are really great. They're a lot better than what we may be used to from previous versions of Unity ECS. However, they are not perfect. There's a few quirks kind of here and there, and I will point them out um, as we go along, but they really just improve the overall development and debugging experience from you know what it had been in the past. There are a few additional debug specific features that are now integrated into the Unity ECS. I will be going over those in a separate video. Today's video is just going to be dedicated around the new uh, windows and inspectors. All right, so we're just gonna start over in Unity. I'm gonna point out a few things first. So from the past, you may have this entity debugger. Now, if you do click on this, you may get this little warning that says the entity debugger is now deprecated and will be removed in a future release. And it basically instructs you to open the new uh, dots windows here so you still can use the entity debugger for now however basically all these features have been replaced and kind of separated out into their own uh, new editor windows so the way you actually get to them is just by going up to window and then dots and then under here we'll have these new windows for archetypes hierarchy system and components you can just go ahead and ignore this physics one for now because this is not like a new um, window that gives us any additional information so the one we're going to start with is the hierarchy window here so the hierarchy window is a really cool one because it gives us um, basically like kind of a mirror hierarchy that what we may be used to for traditional uh, Unity mono behaviors here. So of course, traditionally in Unity, we have this whole hierarchy of game objects. And of course, we can click on these and edit their values and so on. However, if we go ahead and enter play mode, of course, we have a lot of those things set to the uh, conversion mode of convert and destroy. So they basically just disappear out of this hierarchy here. However, if we move over to our dots hierarchy window, we can now see that basically these are all the entities that now exist in our world. So for example, these entity spawners, these were the ones that actually had been converted. So we can actually just go ahead and click to select on any one of these here. And then you'll see that over in the inspector, we have all these options that gives us information about the data components associated with this particular entity. Now you may have seen something similar to this if you did use the previous editor tooling. However, there is one major difference here is we can actually edit these values in real time. So for example, we can say, increase the translation right here in the y direction you'll see that it is actually going up and down in the y direction of course you know x z that's all going to update in real time now i should point out that these values are only editable during runtime if we did actually close out of play mode well for first of all we don't have access to that entity anymore because of the entity conversion process however we still can look at entities that will be converted that are part of sub scenes so for example i have this test sub scene here with this sphere in the middle uh, you'll notice that because we're not in play mode anymore we're actually not allowed to edit any of these values however when we do go ahead and enter runtime I will go ahead and select this entity again. You'll see that all these values are no longer grayed out and we can actually edit these as we please. Now I should note that if you're not seeing these converted entities by default, there is one little option that you do need to set. So you just go up to dots and conversion settings. Make sure that you have this live conversion set to enabled as well as the live conversion runtime state in scene view selected. Okay, so let's just go ahead and select one of these entities. We'll go ahead and look in the entity inspector again. So again, you'll see kind of all the data components associated with this particular entity. There's this cool section at the top for tags. So if there are any, you know, zero data data components associated with this entity, it'll just list them all right here. And you'll see that there is a search bar so we can actually search for you know any component that we want and then select this nice and easily. This is really good for you know if we have situations where we may have a bunch of components on a single entity. Now another new feature here is this relationships tab. So if we go ahead and click on this, this actually lists out 
all the systems that potentially affect that entity. And you'll see that there are kind of these little like drop down arrows next to them. And so we can actually click on these and it basically shows us all the components that are required to fit that query that basically say that this entity should be part of this system. So again, we can just kind of click on any of these here. And if we do want to get any more information about say this query, we can click this little window icon here. And this opens up a new window that gives us some more information about the specific query. So it shows you know which components are necessary for that particular query, whether there's a read and write access or just read only access. So of course, this is you know really great information to have. Also, we can go over to the entities tab and it's going to list out all the entities that fit under that particular query. Of course, we can just go ahead and say like, you know, double click on one of these and then it's going to load us up in the inspector. So we can now, you know, check out this entity if we do want to get a little bit more information on that. Um, another thing we can do over on the relationships tab is we can actually um, click this little icon here and this will bring us to the particular system. So now we can kind of uh, get some more information about the system. You see that it shows us the query here. Of course, we can have systems um, that have multiple different types of queries in them. Um, of course, going over to the relationships tab, it's going to show us, you know, the entity queries. Again, all the entities that are falling under those particular queries. And here's just some other good information to have about the particular system is this scheduling constraints. So this basically shows, you know, the particular system. And if we have any of the attributes that say, oh, this needs to update before this system or after this system, that can all be tracked here. So here's an example of say the rotate cube system. And you'll see that I'm scheduling the rotate cube system after this make sync point system and move cube system here as well. So again, just lots of really good information here. All right, and then finally, the last thing that I wanted to show off in the inspector. Um, so for example, if we go back to these queries tabs here and we look at, um, you know, these are the particular data components that fit under that query. Now, again, we can get information about, you know, if that particular query needs read and write access to any given component or not. Um, but we can also click this little icon here and this will bring us to the component inspector which gives us some more information about the particular component so this is really nice because it tells us exactly what data is on any given component so for example you see that this entity spawn data it has a entity to spawn variable which is of type entity it has a spawn delay which is a float and it also has a timer which is a float and it gives you some more information about um, exactly what namespace it is in uh, the type index stable stable type hash uh, category you'll see that this is component data so for example we also might have you know a shared component so it'll, it'll kind of give us that information there um, also some really interesting statistics which is saying um, you know the size and the chunk the type size alignment alignment and chunk you'll see that these are all set to 16 bytes for now again there is another relationships tab and this shows us you know all the entities within the default world that have that particular component. And if there's any, uh, you know, systems that have, you know, different types of access to them, you know, again, gives us all that good information here. So those are basically all the inspectors. Now I do just want to show off some of the new windows. So I've basically just put these all down here. You'll see there's the archetypes, systems, and components window. So we'll just start with the components one because we're just kind of talking about components in the inspector. Uh, you'll see that this literally lists out all the components that this project has so you know i i've definitely created a lot of components because this is kind of my uh, big general tutorial project so um, most of the tutorial videos that i've been making as of recently um, going to be inside here however if you kind of look through these you know there's a ton of these that i didn't make there's a lot of things that are basically just kind of built in by default so you can really get an idea about you know how many components are required to kind of make everything work and of course there is a little search window so it makes things a little bit more manageable so if we want to type in spawn we can see you know every component that i have with like spawn in the title now also i should point out that it shows kind of over to the side uh you know what type of component it is whether it's a data component or a tag um, so for example tags the icon looks a little bit different there's kind of like a little tag icon so that's kind of another way that you can tell um, these icons are pretty universal you'll see these um, as components are referenced throughout the editor so that's really nice um, of course there's things like shared components managed data components i'll put all the icons uh, up on screen right now so next let's go over to the systems one so the systems one you know this is going to be kind of familiar from what you might have seen previously in say the entity debugger so of course it's going to basically just give you you know all these little drop downs 
for the different kind of you know phases that any particular system could live in so you know inside the update you're going to have your simulation system group inside here there's the fixed step simulation group you know uh, this new variable rate simulation group which i'm super excited to play with some more um, and then you know all the systems that i've created some other default ones like in the the transform system group um, so this is you know just listing out all the systems here you'll notice that most of these systems kind of have this like circle icon there's this like kind of top arrow and this lower arrow that basically just means it's a regular system another one to point out is the you know begin and end uh, entity command buffers for each group so for example the begin one the icon is a little bit different it kind of has just the top arrow and then if we scroll down to the end where there's the end simulation entity command buffer system, you'll see that it's just kind of the bottom arrow. So it's just kind of, you know, differentiating between those. So now I should point out that we can select the world that we're basically monitoring up here. So I only have a default world right now, so we can just go ahead and select that. So that's going to list, you know, all the systems inside the default world here. However, there is another world section here. If I understand the docs correctly, this basically means this is the world that this particular system is operating against. And so I just kind of want to read off this one thing from the docs that says this means that it doesn't automatically run any worlds that you've created. If you want your system to run automatically, then you must add them to the main world, even though they still run against entities in your custom world. So what I'm assuming that means is, you know, if we still want kind of our system to run automatically by Unity E, ECS. Um, we can add it to the default world. However, the scope is going to be um, basically running on entities in a different world. So that's, you know, one thing to watch out for. Um, so another cool one we can see is the entity count. So that's, you know, how many entities are actually running on any given system. Um, and then we also have the time in milliseconds right here. So this is going to, you know, give us a pretty accurate count about, you know, how long a particular system or system group is taking to run. Of course, there's a little search bar so we can filter by a particular system if we want to. Um, also, there are these little three dots up here and we can say show full player loop. And this is going to give us um, a lot more options, you know, things that are kind of, you know, hidden by default. Um, but if we're doing some, you know, really low level debugging, that's something that we might want to. Um, however, I'm just going to turn that off by default. Also, um, there's these dots editor preferences here. If we go ahead and select on that, it's going to open up the editor preferences. Um, in here, there's just kind of like some generic things that you might want to configure, but most of it can just be left as default. Now, one really great feature about this systems window is that we can actually enable and disable systems at runtime. So for example, if we just go ahead and start this system that starts spawning all these capsules, um, and we're kind of in the middle of debugging it and we don't, um, you know, maybe have a way of stopping this at runtime, well, we can actually go down, we can find this spawn entities system, and you'll see over on the very left-hand side, there's almost um, kind of a little selection box that has this little like plug looking thing on it. If we click on that, that's actually going to disable the system. So you see that this system is no longer spawning any new capsules. All the existing capsules are already there already. So let's just go ahead and we can just re-enable the system on the fly just by clicking that again. And you see it kind of goes, um, changes between this plug with a, a line through it or just this regular plug uh, to let you know that a system has been enabled or disabled. Now let's see, actually, because this is using an end simulation entity command buffer system, I'm assuming, yeah, if we actually go ahead and disable that system, um, we do end up getting some warnings in the, the error log about that. Um, but yeah, it actually does stop spawning all those capsules because all those capsules are being spawned in the end simulation entity command buffer system. And if we go ahead and re-enable, <laughs> that's awesome. We just get this massive, like instant one frame playback of all these uh, things that were queued up. So that's that's really cool. That's really funny. I, I hadn't actually done that until now. And just one more time for good measure. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome um, so then finally that brings me to the last one which is the archetypes window so this is a cool one um, something that I think can be very useful except I didn't get it to work quite correctly so basically this is going to show us you know all the archetypes in uh, it's kind of broken up by default world here and you'll see that it's also um, shows the ones that are converted in the sub scene here so we can just kind of go through these here and it gives us some more information about the entities in a given archetype. Now it kind of just lists out the hash right now. Uh, for some reason this field is editable and you know you can like change it but that change doesn't exactly stick. So that might be something that's um, kind of nice is if we could maybe say, you know, assign some different labels to 
um, these different archetypes. So we could say like, oh, this is the, you know, the player archetype. And then so we can kind of, you know, have that for debugging purposes later on. Um, but anyways, that's not how it works right now. But um, basically, you'll see that kind of going down here, we have some information about um, entities. That's going to be the number of entities in a given archetype. Unused entities is going to give us some information basically about our chunk utilization. So basically, the way that ECS works is when we instantiate a new entity, it's going to first allocate a 16 kilobyte block of memory called a chunk. And then it's going to go ahead and populate the data values for that first specific entity in there. Now, if we only have that one entity, then we're going to have a bunch of unused entities, meaning that that data has been allocated for entities, but there's no actual data there. So, you know, just kind of looking at this unused entities, that's going to give us an idea about, you know, how much space that we're wasting. So chunks, you'll see that chunks is two. That means that we've allocated two particular chunks for this entity. Uh, chunk capacity shows you how many entities can fit in a given chunk. So again, this is just kind of all good information about chunk utilization. And then finally, there's segments. So you see segments is two. So segments basically means, you know, how many unique shared component values does this given archetype have if you know shared components then you know that basically that means that you know for every unique value of shared components those are going to separate out entities into different chunks so you'll see that's why here we have two entities that are separated out into two chunks and we have a total of 170 unused entities um, you know, even though our chunk capacity is 86, we can fit potentially up to 86 entities in one chunk. You do see that there is this shared component down here uh, listed out. And, you know, that value must just be set differently on these two entities, which effectively separates them out into two separate chunks. And this, yeah, then down here, this basically gives us some information about, you know, all the particular data components, how much memory that they're taking up. Um, and then external components, this is where we have things like shared components and dynamic buffers and so on so again this is a lot of really great information to have however it doesn't seem to actually be working correctly for me um, so you'll see that kind of in our scene we do have a bunch of these capsules spawned and if we kind of go through here you'll see that we'll eventually get to one um, that should be let me see I think this might be it okay now this is the one right here so you see that you know it has this capsule tag on here so that's kind of how I can differentiate these um, but it is only showing as four entities so for some reason that's not quite updating I was doing a bunch of testing and I got it to like update correctly one time and it was just really strange but um, so yeah I'm not sure exactly what's going on with that hopefully that's just some uh, bug that will get cleaned up in a new version um, because I do think these are really cool and important tools to have so of course it will be nice if those work properly um, of course if I am doing something incorrectly feel free to let me know but yeah that's just kind of a general overview about these new editor and inspector windows again I do think they're really great these are you know extremely helpful these are so much better than what we had previously I'm glad things are moving in the right direction definitely excited to get my hands on the new workflows coming out um, if you haven't already I would recommend checking out that GDC talk where they kind of went over um, you know some of these existing editor workflows and so on and kind of introduced some of the new ones that are coming up so I will leave a link down in the description if you are interested in that um, once again, I am going to be doing another video very soon talking about some of the new debugging features and workflows. Um, so definitely looking forward to that one. Anyways, if you did enjoy today's video and you learned something, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's Entity Component System and their data oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comments section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. Hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.